If you've been watching the past several episodes of History Traveler, you know that we have been in the area of Verdun, which saw some of the most horrific fighting in all of the First World War. And everywhere you walk here, just like back here, you, you can see evidence from the battle that took place here over a period of 300 days in 1916. And some of the things that happened during this battle that, that men endured and accomplished are just absolutely legendary. But what happens when the, the legendary kind of evolves into a full-blown myth? Well, that's one of the things that we're going to be tackling today at one of the most popular spots in Verdun at the Trench of Bayonets. If you come to Verdun, one of the more popular spots is this one right here. Uh, this is a memorial to French soldiers uh, that is known as the Trench of Bayonets. And there's a pretty big story that, that goes along with this that I'm going to get back to in just a little bit. But first I want to set up like why this story is what it is. So. If we look right up ahead of us on the other side of, of this memorial wall, uh, this is where the French would have had a uh, trench network. And behind them, we'll just walk across the road here, there was a ravine called the Dame Ravine. Uh, soldiers later nicknamed it the Death Ravine for good reason. So up here is the Duomont Plateau. So you have Fort Duamont up there, um, and there are some other forts. Fort Vaux is, is just beyond that. And then the ravine goes down and dumps into the Meuse River Valley. So that provided a really convenient channel for the French to get up to the plateau. And of course, the Germans really wanted to take this position right here, because if they could overtake the French here, they could get access to the ravine and cut off the French from getting to the Duamont Plateau. As you enter the gate into the memorial complex, you come up this path right here that I'm assuming was designed to look like a, a support trench that is going up to the frontline trench. Well, on June 10th of 1916, the 137th Infantry Regiment would have come up a support trench to relieve the frontline soldiers who were up here uh, at, the, at the honeycomb. Uh, among them was a lieutenant by the name of Lucien Polyman. Uh, Polyman had been ordained as a clergyman, but when the war started, rather than signing up as a chaplain, uh, he, he just signed up as a lieutenant. And he's going to find himself up here during some of the worst of the artillery barrages that you can possibly imagine. Now when I say that there was just an unrelenting artillery barrage that happened up here 
on this hillside, well, you can still see the evidence of it today. And uh, if we move up here, here is a monument to the 137th Regiment of Infantry. So like I said, they got up here on the 10th and they, there had been a, a German prisoner who had been captured who had said that something big was coming. Uh, and that big thing happened on June 11th. The Germans just cut loose with this unrelenting artillery barrage that really took out a significant number of the men from the 137th. Um, they followed up with an infantry attack that was repulsed, uh, pulled back, and then just started pounding these guys again. Uh, just, like I said, uh, unrelenting. And we're, we're approaching this concrete structure up here. This is where the trench line was. Now, right here in this trench line, the, the losses that the 137th suffer are just appalling. I think there was like 64 killed, uh, over 320 who were wounded, and over 800 who were counted as missing uh, after they had a chance to regroup. Uh, that, that's about 50% casualties in a regiment. And for the ones who were missing, uh, it, it's most likely that, that they had been killed. Uh, although, there is the possibility that some had been taken prisoner, like Lieutenant Polyman. Right after the war, the commander of the 137th decides to return to the battlefield to, to try and make sense of some of the things that he saw and experienced. And he comes right up here to the honeycomb. And when he does, he sees this trench line that is completely filled in, but sees the ends of rifle barrels sticking up out of the dirt. Now, he doesn't make any assumptions or anything like that, but the story gets told and then retold and then retold again until it becomes this heroic story of these French soldiers who were holding the line and were just... Uh, facing off against the Germans and refusing to budge and an artillery shell hits and buries them all and nothing but their bayonets are sticking up out of the ground. Now, the commander never said anything about bayonets. He saw uh, the ends of rifle barrels that were sticking up. And that is why we have this memorial here today because that story caught like wildfire and spread everywhere. Now, just like every big myth, uh, there's an element of truth that is involved. So, it is true that there were French soldiers who were buried in this trench. And it is true that the barrels of their rifles were sticking up out of the ground. Now, the question is, why did that happen? It wasn't because of the artillery barrage. Rather, when the Germans overtook this position, there were dead men who were lying in the trenches. And for sanitary reasons, uh, maybe out of reasons of mutual respect, they, they buried the men in the trench and just left the rifles leaning up against the trench wall. Uh, and that was the birth of the legend about the Trench of Bayonets here in Verdun.
We're going to walk around and take a look at the memorial from a couple different angles here. Uh, this memorial that you see, this concrete memorial, was dedicated uh, on the 8th of December 1920, I believe. Uh, the French president was here. It was a, a real big thing. Uh, none of these trees would have been around here, uh, at least I don't think so. Uh, but anyway, in, in the years after the war, they actually dug up this trench and disinterred 21 Frenchmen in this trench line that was part of something that the Germans called the honeycomb. And uh, the, they found that the, the Frenchmen that they disinterred were not standing up. They hadn't been buried alive while holding their rifles, uh, but rather they were laying down and, and the rifles were you know, not being held by them. Uh, which kind of disproved this whole thing about these Frenchmen who had been buried alive while manning the trenches standing up. All right, well, that was a little bit on the real story of the Trench of Bayonets. Here, here's the problem with this whole Trench of Bayonets thing is I really want the legend to be true because I, I like that story. And that's, that's how these myths end up, uh, I guess, getting legs and, and gaining traction and then just running away because people, people really like those stories. But it's the truth that matters most. Uh, now, as for Lieutenant Polyman, uh, he ended up surviving the war, uh, was in a German prisoner of war camp for the duration. Uh, I think he ended up becoming a member of the French Parliament. But unfortunately, when World War II rolled around, he found himself on the wrong side and uh, ended up siding with the, uh, the Vichy government. So anyway, that was a little unfortunate. But anyway, that was a little bit more right here in Verdun on the trench bayonets.